Hi, I'm Scribble and I'm still bad at making tutorials. But before we start, we need to go through some suggestions from the last video. We have once Eastgvef, which rolls off the tongue very nicely. Then we have Hex Modi, also very nice. And my personal favorite is Lucky Rigging. Uh, it's a, just a synonym, but it's also kind of distinct from RNG manipulation, so mm, I don't know, I like it. So let's talk about the Thick Rate Changer mod. It was made by. Uh, Guilherme Chaguri. Okay, and changes the tick rate of your game. And this is not going to be a tutorial on how to install it. I will just link one of the many videos here on YouTube so you can check it out yourself. Minecraft is tied to ticks, which means there is a set speed in which the game updates its physics and everything else. And that speed is 20 ticks per second. So no matter how high our FPS count is, the game updates always occur 20 times a second. Console games usually update their game when a frame has passed and you achieve slowdown by limiting the frame rate of these games. But limiting the frame rate also means that it's super choppy, of course. But if we slow down the tick rate with the mod, the game updates happen slower, but the FPS will stay the same, which means some smooth slow motion. And so the basic command for this mod is slash tick rate or slash tick rate changer or slash ticks, followed by the tick rate you want to set it to. Another command is slash tick rate set map. This will make an entry in the level dead in your world and if you join this world the tick rate will be set to that rate. I personally don't use this too often but instead I use slash tick rate set default a lot. If you leave a world, it will always reset to the default tick rate, which can be set with this command. And a question that I get a lot from beginners is what tick rate should I set it to if I want to start? And it is normally personal preference, I use 5 or 2 very often, and the lower the more precise movements you can do, but it also takes very long to go somewhere, for example if you have to do some walking and an all achievements run, 2 is taking ages to get there, but if you do some block placing and if you are as skilled as me, then 5 is probably a bit too fast to make things precise. And if you're going for a sub 40 seconds Minecraft ZC test, then 1 is probably the best for you. A link to circuits test is in the video description. And now let's look at something really underrated, the config file of this mod. Up here we have also the default tick rate, so you can change this in here as well, but you have to restart your game to get this applied. And as a side note, if you change the default tick rate in game, it will also change in here. Underneath we have the maximum and minimum tick rates, pretty self-explanatory. And underneath that we have several other features. I will cover change sound later in this video. If you enable keybinds and look in your options, then you will see that you can now bind these to change the tick rate. And show messages disables the message you get when changing the tick rate. And now to some problems with the mod, which are sometimes tied to the game and can't be avoided. In 1.7.10 the keybinding feature doesn't work. In 1.8 plus you will see that the block hitbox upon a change will lag behind a bit. In 1.7.10 this wasn't the case, so placing blocks might be a bit weird. In tick rates below 5 the mouse wheel won't function anymore, you have to use hotkeys for this instead. Tab completing things is a bit odd, it cycles through the options instead of auto completing things. And now to the game sound thingy I mentioned earlier, it changes the speed of the game sound depending on the tick rate. However, it's kept at 1.5, so if you are below 1.5 times the speed, the sounds won't change further. And 
that is the reason why there's usually no sound in Tessus. And that's it for this video. This time we have Charm with SideQuest and his new CP is called Interdimensional. And until next time, see ya!